Hello and welcome to Control Systems Lectures. In our previous lectures, we have dealt with modeling in the uh, complex domain. We've modeled mechanical systems and on the mechanical systems, we've modeled translational mechanical systems and rotational mechanical systems where we looked at two, the rotational mechanical systems without gears and we looked at the gear systems. And then we looked at electrical circuits or electrical systems, uh, how to model different circuits arrangements. In this lecture, I'll be looking at electromechanical systems. Electromechanical systems are in our everyday life, like the antenna, it's an electromechanical system, robot arm control system is an electromechanical system, and we have motors, and we'll be looking at motors more in detail. So electromechanical systems are a hybrid of mechanical and electrical systems. Usually a voltage supplied to drive a mechanical system. They are used in position control or tracking problems. And motors are the main actuators in all these systems. So since motors are the main actuators, we'll be focusing on how to model the motor. So there are different types of motors. You have DC motors, you have AC motors, and you have them in different sizes. You have those with high output, some with low output, some for toys. So you have motors and they have different applications in vehicles, in household appliances, in beauty apparatus. You find them in office equipment. You find them in virtually every sphere of field, medical equipment. And so motors are applied in different uh, systems and in different fields and appliances. So if you look at this, you have uh, the motor here. The rotating part is, is your rotating circuit, which is called the armature. And the armature is made up of uh, inductance and, 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 um, and resistors, which we're going to see how this is modeled. And then you have the starter, which provides the static field or the field winding and kind of create the flux or the electromagnetic field. Um, that then allows current being passed to generate the force and we will see that very soon. So this is a DC motor arrangement. This is the armature side, the circuit, the one that actually rotates and it rotates and there is a shaft connected to it and so from that shaft you have your rotor and here you can have your output and the output can then uh, make use of the torque that is generated by the motor to drive uh, any other machine that you may want to, to drive. It could be a pump, uh, it could be uh, a toy, it could be a car, different types of um, output applications that you can, you can use that for. So you can see here is the applied voltage and this is the armature resistor and the armature inductance and this is the fixed field, uh, what we call the start or the field winding. And this voltage here is the uh, back uh, electromotive force uh, as this winding. So we apply a voltage and we have this winding, the armature rotates. But because there is an electromagnetic field here, the rotation also generates um, uh, some voltage. And, and that voltage is called the uh, back electromotive uh, force which is here we represent it as VB. So VB is a product of the rotation of, of, of this whole armature uh, and due to the fact that we've got uh, a field that is here, an electric, electromagnetic field that is, is here. And you know that when you have a coil rotating in an electromagnetic field, it generates electricity. So the armature current is IA. Uh, of course in the time domain and it flows through the magnetic field at right angle and experiences the force using the Fleming's right rule we can see that if your current is in this direction then your magnetic field which is also in this direction if you have your magnetic field and it's right angle with the current it will generate a force that will be in the upward direction so using the Fleming's rules we can find the direction of our force so this force is directly proportional to the magnetic field, which is B, and the length of the coil. And then A, uh, and, and this is now the current 
So this, this shows the relationship between the force that is generated and the magnetic field, the, the length of the coil or the resistor, and the current that is uh, the armature current, which is the one that is applied. So where B is magnetic field strength and L is the length of the conductor. The resulting torque turns the rotor. And now we can see that as the conductor moves at right angle to the magnetic field, it generates a voltage E at the terminals of the conductor. And this is given by E is equals to B L V, uh, where V is the velocity of the conductor. So the velocity of the conductor, the field, magnetic field, and the length of the coil. So this is the, the um, voltage that is generated. Now the voltage of the armature is proportional to its speed. So the voltage of the armature, VB, is directly proportional to the speed, which is the rate of change of angular uh, position. And therefore, VBT will be KB. This is now uh, the constant of proportionality. Uh, D theta M, we just rewrite in D uh, theta dot as D theta M over DT. So VB is called the back electromotive force. I've already explained this. And KB is a constant of proportionality called the back electromotive force constant. And of course, you can see that d theta m dt is our angular velocity omega m of the motor. And, um, and now, if you look at equation 3, if we take the Laplace transform of equation 3, we will arrive at equation 4 in the s domain. So this will now be d theta m dt will be s theta m. Then the next thing we need to do is to form a relationship between the current, the voltage, and the back uh, electromotive voltage, which is the VB. We want to form a relationship amongst these three. So first, we write the loop equation using our electrical system. We have a loop here with a resistor inductance. And so we have an applied voltage here. So we can write our loop equation, which will be RAI plus LA DI DT plus the voltage, the back electromotive voltage here. And this will be equals to the applied voltage EA. So this is our equation for the electrical part. And if we take the Laplace transform of this equation, we will arrive at RAIAS plus LAS. IAS plus VBS. This will be equals to the applied uh, voltage EAS. And this gives us equation 5. The torque TM generated by the motor is also proportional to the armature current. So this armature current generate the torque. And so this torque is directly proportional to the armature current. Therefore, we have the torque Tm in Laplace transformed is equal to KTIA, where Kt is the constant of proportionality. Uh, please note that the value of Kt is the same with that of Kb, uh, which we saw in, um, uh, in the previous equations. Now, from equation 6, we can write our Ia to be equal to 1 over Kt Tm. So we have uh, uh, our IA in, in the form of this equation, which is with respect to the torque. To find the transfer function, we substitute 4 and 7 into 5. So uh, to substitute equation 4 and 7, we have them here. So this is equation 4. So we can see we have a VB in terms of this. And this is equation 7, we have our IA. So if we substitute these two into equation 5, it will give us this equation. So all we have done here is in place of VB, we put in KB as theta uh, M. And in place of IA, we put in uh, 1 over KTT M of S. And so we have equation 8. And since the output is theta M, 
S and the input is the applied voltage, the block diagram should be EA, which is our input, equals to the uh, multiplied by the transfer function G of S equals to theta M, which means our transfer function has to have a relationship between EA and theta M. We will therefore need to express TN in terms of theta M because our equation does not have uh, theta M. If you look at the transfer function here, we have theta M on this part of the equation, but we have TM here. So we need to find replace TM with, with, with theta M so that we can have a relationship between theta M and EA, which will give us our transfer function. So we will therefore consider the mechanical side of the motor in order to do that. Now, this is the mechanical side of the motor. You can remember we said that the torque and the theta m of the motor is the output. So if you imagine that the motor is on this side and this is the load that you are carrying or you are applying. So this will be your inertia for the, for the load that the motor is carrying. And this will be a damping uh, viscous damper. Um, so we have JM is the inertia of the armature and any additional load. And DM is the viscous damping of the armature and any additional load. So you can have an additional load to carry. So in that case, if you look at this, now we put, we do our mechanical system, rotational mechanical systems, and we can have JM uh, S square plus DM S theta S is equals to the torque that is applied. And this equation is based on the mechanical system. So now from uh, equation nine, substituting nine into eight, will yield this so what we've just done is we just replace our tm which was sitting here with this equation and so we have this equation now we have theta m here and we have theta m and we have ea so the relationship we are interested in the states are now available so for dc motors usually the inductance is much much less than the resistor therefore we can actually reduce our equation uh, our, uh, therefore 10 can be reduced to RA instead of RA plus LA we just have RA over KT um, uh, JMS plus DM plus KB sorry this is D subscript M uh, S theta M S equals to EA S so that gives us equation 11 after simplifying we have the transfer function as uh, as this so we have theta m s over e a s equals to k t over r a j m um, by this so by just simplifying uh, this equation we arrive at this which is the transfer function is usually the your output over the input so the angular displacement is our output and our input was the voltage that we apply so this is our transfer function this is our g of s if you like we can simplify this by calling this k. It's all these are all constants. So we know um, J M R A K T, and we can also call this part of the equation here alpha. And so we can rewrite this in a more simplified form as k over s uh, into s plus alpha. So equation twelve can be written in this uh, simplified form. But these are the details here in first set of the equation. We need to determine the constant kt and kb because if we you look at the equation we need to find kt and and uh, and kb um dm jm are all uh, the load of the armature and any other load that is going to be applied for but these are constant and we need to know these constants um so um we need to determine the constant kt and kb so we have to consider equation eight this is our equation eight recall that we assume that ra is much much bigger than la or la is much much smaller than ra therefore if we reduce this equation to ra over kt tms plus kbs theta ms equals to eas and we take the inverse laplace transform of equation 13 we will arrive at equation 14 in the time domain now if you look at this equation in the time domain you can see that we have r over kt tm over t and kb omega m because s theta m is omega 
is omega m and then we have our applied voltage if we apply constant voltage that is ea is constant to the motor um, then the motor will have a constant uh, angular speed uh, with a constant torque so if the voltage is kept constant the motor will have a constant speed with a constant torque so we solve for the torque so tm is equals to minus kb kt over r a omega mt plus kt r a e a t and this gives us equation 15. you can see that equation 15 is a straight line equation so this is tm is equals to this omega t plus kt r a e a so this is an equation of a straight line relating tm and e a so we can draw this equation 15 uh, in this form you can see it has a negative slope because of the negative number here so if you um, use a dynamometer to measure the speed for the motor uh, at a particular uh, voltage you will be able to construct these graphs and then you are able to find uh, at no load um, this this will be your omega m equals to zero um, which is the t still that is the torque uh, still that is like the maximum torque you can have um, from the motor and then at this point is uh, tm is equals to zero uh, which means there is no torque uh, no load at all so this is omega no load so you 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 have these two Point and you are able to plot these two graphs so these are the these are graph for two different voltage applied so this is ea1 the amateur voltage one and ea2 uh, you apply two different voltages and you then plot these graphs therefore your t stall you can see now if t stall means omega m is equals to zero so this becomes zero and then your TM will become your T store. And T store will be equals to KT over RAEA. That gives you equation 16. And we can get equation 17 by putting TM equals to zero uh, because we are saying this is omega no load. So if this is zero, then we have KB, KT, omega M, R, A equals to KT, R, A, E, A. So you can see that kt and kt will cancel out ra and ra will cancel out and omega this will now become omega no load so omega no load will now become ea over kb and that is equation 17 so this is how we solve these problems is by finding the constants um, kt and kb and with this constant for for each motor you have the same constant so you then have the constant to be able to put in to in your block diagram and then you can have your um, once you have your kt and kb you can now write your transfer function which you can then carry out your simulation based on the different load that your motor is carrying okay so we can find the electrical constants from 16 and 17 as I've explained and we can measure the speed of the motor using a dynamometer uh, test to find t stall and omega no load at a given EA. So once we do that, then we have our transfer function for the motor. Great. Thank you very much for your attention.